It's famously said in the US Constitution that citizens are entitled to the pursuit of happiness. But what does this actually mean? Many people in the modern world assume that more money equals more happiness. And as time goes on, this ideology becomes a bigger part of Western culture. Of course, the technique to market products and an aspirational lifestyle is nothing new. It dominated the 20th century. And with the advent of the internet, the technology may have changed, but the simple message that being rich will make you happy is still very much at the forefront of people's minds. But are the two linked? Or is our race for more money blocking our ability to be happy? Or is even the pursuit of happiness an idea that was flawed from the start? Before we start to explore this, a little nudge to like this video if you're enjoying it, and if you want to be the first to see more videos like this one, then click the subscribe button and notification bell for Equity Economics. Now, back to wealth versus happiness. First off, the title of this video suggests that the two subjects of wealth and happiness are fighting against each other. But this goes against the culture of Western ideals. The message growing up and what's used as a measure of life success is that the more money you have, the happier you will be. The luxury market epitomizes this perfectly. Expensive watches, cars, suits, and other superfluous items are flaunted in ads, billboards, even with peers, as an eye-catching aspirational catnip of what we need to have. Celebrities are often seen wandering around desolate landscapes in ultra-glossy shots to sell a perfume that you can't smell. What marketers are selling here is the lifestyle they want you to buy into, and the perfume is just one part of that. The other items are those that we mentioned before, the high-end lifestyle that shows off how successful you are. And all of this is supposed to equal happiness. This is what the American dream has developed into. Originally, the American dream was first explored by writer and historian James Truslow Adams in his best-selling 1931 book, Epic of America. He described it as that land of a land in which life should be better and richer and fuller for everyone, with opportunity for each according to ability or achievement. The point here being a meritocracy, where the more talented you were and the harder you worked, then the more you should be rewarded. The original idea was rooted in social mobility and opportunity regardless of your background. But somewhere down the line, the American dream got hijacked and the products of this mobility became the aspiration. Stuff became the goal rather than the opportunity of a better life for you and your family. Of course, the post-war acceleration of being able to advertise products on TV helped to promote this. Then at the back end of the century, the internet ramped this up into overdrive with targeted ads and ads that didn't even look like ads anymore. But what has this got to do with happiness? Well, it's rooted in this idea that wealth equals happiness, which could be argued stemmed from a misinterpretation of the American dream that was promoted by companies and marketers, particularly in the last century. So does wealth and having stuff equate to being happy? Answering this question is far from clear cut. In a recent study with students from University of British Columbia, they were asked if they were more likely to prioritise time over money. A year later, after graduation, they were asked how happy they were, and the results suggested that those who favoured time were happier. Even taking into account their happiness pre-graduation and various socio-economic backgrounds. There is a lot of evidence to suggest that overall on average, those with more money are happier. But it's not as clear-cut as those who make more money are happier. What's more important is how people spend, save and think about money. A UK study of 500 people was very revealing when referring to how controlling money could improve happiness. It showed that the amount of money we see in our bank accounts has more of an effect on happiness than our salary. Those of us who see nothing in our account every time we look understandably feel worse than those who don't, regardless of income. So someone who earns a low salary, but is good at managing money, is likely to be happier than someone who earns big money, but wastes it on an unsustainable lifestyle. 
We're halfway through our look at the pursuit of happiness versus the pursuit of wealth. So another reminder that if you're enjoying the video, why not give us a like and a subscribe? It won't cost you a single tax dollar. Anyway, back to the pursuit of happiness. So we've explored the fact that although money isn't the be all and end all of achieving happiness, the managing of money does have a big impact on our mood. But what about using money and materialistic products as a goal to aspire for, and thus living the idea that reaching that goal improves happiness? Psychologists argue that placing emphasis on a goal of monetary value is doomed to fail from the start. Leon F. Seltzer, PhD, writing in Psychology Today, argues that chasing money for happiness is a paradox, and it's much better to chase spiritual goals such as belonging, community, and our place in nature. His argument is that financial prosperity has too many external factors out of our control. In contrast, spiritual contentment with our lot in life can give us the grounding to weather the storms around us. He also explored the fact that when we target a materialistic goal, and if we're able to reach that goal, any feeling of satisfaction is fleeting and leaves an insatiable desire for more. Rather than being a means to an end, this goal just reaches its end and leaves the person who wanted it a sense of emptiness. This is summed up by Seltzer when he says, like an unquenchable thirst, not the riches, but the lust for riches can never be satisfied. The pursuit for wealth is one that never ends, and this means that happiness can never be achieved. Also, money can actually be seen as a direct blocker to those things that actually do make us happy long term. Money takes time to accumulate. This time could be spent developing human relationships. Wealth accumulation also makes us less likely to donate funds. And there are countless studies showing how exhibiting kindness is a direct contributor to an improved mood of the donator. Seeking happiness in money also means that you measure your self-worth in the dollars and cents of your latest project. Again, another blocker in forming meaningful connections. And there is a school of thought that suggests that the pursuit of happiness is the wrong pursuit to aim for, regardless of whether it's wealth that gets you there or not. Psychologist Christine L. Carter, PhD, argues amongst others that happiness should be a product of what we should really be aiming for, and that's the pursuit of something meaningful. Now what this means differs from person to person, but a good example of this is helping people. It's in our DNA to help each other in communities. And when we help someone, it gives us a feeling of fulfillment and purpose. The happiness then comes from this. This again is another argument against wealth accumulation for the sake of it. This is a selfish pursuit that goes against everything that will keep us fulfilled. Of course, if a person is accumulating more money to give it away and help society, then this is a good example of how seeking wealth can help this fulfillment. Bill Gates may well make this argument, as he's known for giving away a huge percentage of his massive wealth. The pursuit of wealth versus the pursuit of happiness is a misleading title here, because the two aren't necessarily against each other. To a certain extent, they do complement each other. Having financial security appears to make us happier and relieves anxiety. However, the exclusive pursuit of wealth appears to actually be detrimental to being happy. What's more likely to make us happy is not the accumulation of money, but more how we manage it, and probably more importantly, how we can use it to help others and give true meaning to our lives. Do you think chasing wealth is the key to happiness? Should we even be pursuing happiness at all? Let us know in the comments and remember to like this video and subscribe to Equity Economics to get notified of the latest videos, just like this one. Thanks for watching.